Hello, Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me here at the Freak Show as I continue with my Let's Play of Dun 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 Pillars of Eternity. We're on episode 12, guys. Of we can continue talking to Edder here because we can and because we want to. Uh, something about him. Why did you stay so long in a town that hated you? I'm sure my parents are still wondering the same thing. The Aeothasian purges were like this madness had come over the town, like a disease. Seems like when you see something like that, your instinct is to wait for it to pass, even when you know it probably won't. Fair enough, fair enough. The family whose farm I worked on, they had a little hollowborn girl. And they heard the Animancers had this cure, the salvation it was called. They went running. This salvation, they were putting animal souls in children. Creepy. You might have heard about it. Giving them enough personality to care for themselves. You can guess how that turned out. Matter of time, the children broke down, became wild things, monsters. Really disturbing. Anyway, these farmers put the family dog's soul in their little girl. For a while, the girl, she's making eye contact, she's feeding herself, albeit in a kind of messy way. And one day she snaps, they found her gnawing on her brother's bones. Had to chain her up, put her in a cow pen. Whoa, that's creepy. Well, the mother, she wouldn't have anything to do with the girl after that. But the father, he'd visit every day. Feed her chickens, toss water on her once in a while to get the dirt off. Most of the village, they'd whisper about him. Poor man, they'd say. Sick with grief. He was just waiting for his daughter to look up one day and recognize her papa. He was waiting for her to get better. Didn't understand that at the time, of course, but... These days, I think about him a lot. That's disturbing. Like, really disturbing. Uh, just my parents now, they took a ship back to... Adir, when uh, the purges started, they wanted me to go with them, but I didn't see things like they did. Been a long time since I've seen them. I really should visit, but for some reason, I haven't felt much like leaving home. Good thing they chased me out, or I might not have left. I might not have ever left, or I might have never left. Either way. All What's right, and mind? what about the Aethus? What is there to know about Aethus? Looking to find religion. Maybe you want to start with a god that hasn't been burned to dust, but. I won't stop you. Mm. Aethus, he was a young man with a silver crown. Carried a candle around with him. <laughs> Sounds like I'm giving a bad eulogy here. He was, well, he was a lot of different things to different people, I guess. Rebirth, redemption, light. Out in the country, he's Gaun. Gaun? Gaun. The farmer who helps all things pass, seasons, and people both. He watches over the week, does gaoon, sees imbalances made right. You could see why all the copperless rowdies around here might take a liking to someone like that. He was real popular here for a time. These days you won't find too many worshipping Aethys in the open. It's hard to know who still does it in private and who's given up. Feels like I'm the last one sometimes. He smirks. If that's the case, he deserves all the mourning. In my way. I don't suppose he expects me to show up at his temple these days. Not much left to do for him other than keep his memory alive and keep hoping that he's just been playing a joke on all of us these past 15 years. Far as I know, he hasn't said anything to anybody since the God Hammer detonated. Ooh, the God Hammer. I worship him then. He grimaces, well, if it turns out he's not dead, and I gave up on him, I'd betrayed. I'd have betrayed my god twice. Even the god of redemption's got to have standards. I'd probably be reborn, reborn as a fat autumn's, or Aumau's horse. There you go. Oh, that said autumn. Glanced at it real quick and looked over at the time. Yeah. That's right. Always keep my eyes moving, guys. It's a tough thing to do. I feel like I'm having a seizure sometime. No, I'm kidding. That's, that's not true. It's not funny either. Seizures are no joke. That's not really it, though. Not all of it, anyway. He casts a sidelong glance. Guess it's more I still believe in the things that he believed in. I just hope his death doesn't mean the death of those things as well. Sometimes it looks that way. Raised that way. My family's been Aethasian going way back. I suppose it wasn't much of a choice at first. I don't know for sure why my family started worshipping him. Probably because of gone looking after folks like us. Well, I guess I'll have to call him gone now that I know how to pronounce it a hundred percent. He looks you in the eye, conspiratorial. 
Could just as well be that my ancestor did something so bad that only Aethys could forgive. It explained a lot about where I got some of my less respectable traits. Did you only worship him because that's how you were raised? Mm -mm. There was something I genuinely liked about Aethys. Always. Like he understood people better than the other gods. Knew all our flaws and weaknesses and accepted us for that. Folks are at their worst when they're afraid. A god like Aethys, he made you realize there was nothing to fear. Made you a better person. Of course, he goes away for a few years and look what happens. What made you think Wadewin didn't speak for Aethys? Was his actions. Not when he started his rebellion, and not even when he took over Raed Saris. Raed Saris. When he sent his armies into Deerwood. Okay, Raed Saris. Let's see if I can remember that. Up to that point, he was sticking up for his people. That's what Aethys does, at least the gone part of him. Those farmers were starving and their governments didn't lift a finger. I figured it wasn't Aethys himself, at least... If it wasn't Aethys himself, at least he had the right idea. But then he sent armies across the border, even crossed it himself in the end. Word was he was chasing refugees that escaped the rebellion and wanted to punish them and punish us for allowing them to live here. That... That just didn't fit for me. Those are the deeds of a vengeful god. Skaen or, or uh, Wodika, maybe. Or just a man who'd lost his sense. I still have trouble believing it, but there's no one left to ask if it's true. Tell me about the purges. Are you sure you don't want to talk about something more pleasant? Like the War of Black Trees or the Legacy or something? <laughs> it's eye-opening seeing just how naked you are when you've got no god to protect you. The Saints' War was a hard time to be a dear wooden. People thought it was the end times. They talk big about how we were going to or we were going to defeat a god, but I don't think there was a man from here to the White March didn't think he was going to die. It does something to you thinking you're going to die at someone else's hand. There's a rage that comes, indignation. Imagine a whole country full of that. Might have been Cold Morn that started it, town near the border. They let Wade win, march right on through. Rest of Deerwood cursed their names till the end of the war. Some say it was the Eothasians, or the Eothasians, there that persuaded the town not to oppose the army. Others said it was just cowardice. It was like the legacy that way. No one knew the real reason, so they just picked whichever one best suited what they wanted to believe. Either way, the town was burning before the first ashes of Eothis hit the ground. And it felt good to to the people here to be in control after being so helpless. So the fire spread. A lot of us Eothasians went the way of our god. There were claims from the church of Magran that she'd actually commanded the purges. I found that hard to believe. Sounded to me like people were doing what they wanted, wrapping their god around it like she was a cloak. Then again, that's what I thought about Wadewin. Okay. What's on your mind? Guess that's it. All right, so we know a little bit more about the backstory of Aethys and, well, about Edder as well. All right, let's head on into yes. the blacksmith. See if we can get ourselves some camping supplies and maybe do some. I don't know if I want to do any upgrading. Maybe. Well met, friend. Well met indeed. You mentioned something about the stock being low. We just don't have the supplies. Been expecting the next delivery for near a week now and haven't seen a sign of it uh half have to expect they were hit by bandits the road out east is crawling with them or my workers ran off with the wagons themselves maybe to make some coin tau to anu snorts as if the lot would dare <laughs> he's right about the bandits the dire situations in villages like this and the exodus to the cities has created far too many opportunities for the unscrupulous sorts scratches his jaw thinking if you happen to be headed that way maybe you could keep an eye out for a supply wagon or my shipment at least they'd be cutting through the black meadow i expect only road good for it or only good road for it rather as it is most of our weapons go to his grace lord radrick uh, glances at a nearby guard and that's as it should be but it doesn't leave much for outsiders we just don't have the iron all right, I'll see them back safe and sound. Uh, where was the wagon traveling from? We send the wagon up to New Hiomar with weapons, and it swings round through the log home. 
and the like to purchase supplies. Shortest route back is through the Black Meadow, and then north through the wilds. He shakes his head. Uh, had a trader come through with word they'd made it to Long or Logholm, but haven't heard a thing since. Hmm. Well, I guess uh, I'll find your supplies. I'll see him back safe and sound. I'd appreciate your trying, anyhow. You bring back the supplies at least, and I'll give. I'll have much more to offer you. A discount to start, and if you do find my workers, you give them a good smack upside the head for me. All right. Well, I, I want to actually trade too. So let's see what you got. Do you do have camping supplies? Very nice. Uh, I can only use four at this moment, so let's take four of those. That's 300 CP. Let's see if we can't get rid of some additional items that we don't necessarily need. It's 275. Wow, that was really that little bit of money, huh? That's a bit off-putting, but okay. We'll throw that there. 265. We'll throw the hood up there as well. I guess the armor. Maybe the trap. 190 CP. We're still losing money on this deal. It's not great. Oh well, it is what it is. Kind of needed to have it happen anyway, so there we go. It is done. We have our supplies and we're ready to continue onward. Onward to victory or whatever. Alright, so let's explore the last little bits of town and then I guess we'll head east and try to deal with the banditos. El banditos, yes. Alright, so there's probably something going on up over here maybe. I don't know. It's like the only place in town we haven't been to... Oh, there actually is something going on up here, literally. We know there's more grain in here, or in there, Trumbull. We won't settle for scraps while you grow fat on our crops. A muffled shouting emerges from inside the mill. The first of you drunkards that comes through the door gets shot between the eyes. God's hear me, Swainer. I'll put you down like a dog. Come away for now, lads. We'll, but we'll be back, Trumbull. And we'll have fair prices, or by the flame, we'll have, the, uh, we'll have a reckoning. I was going to say THE Reckoning, but apparently that's not the case. <clears throat> Alright, so these folks are leaving. And apparently we are going to go up here and maybe do something. Ooh, there's a mushroom that I'm going to totally go over and steal because I can do these things. Yeah, Settler's Arrow. Alright, I guess we go inside. An elven man stands before you. His relatively stocky build suggests a life of labor. His face is pale and drawn and his eyes wide. Behind him, a young man or a younger man and a woman exchange worried glances. The miller raises a club as you enter. It shakes violently in his grip. Get back if you value your life. Uh, put that down before you get yourself hurt. Uh, Trumbull only raises the club higher. I mean it. I won't have Swainer and his lackeys threatening me in my own mill. Um, yeah, uh, my name's Hammy Hampton, and I've only just arrived in Gilded Vale. Trumbull shakes his head. You picked a bad time to come visiting. Gilded Vale's had all its shine scraped off, just a big dung heap now. And Swainer thinks he's the king of it. They're all of them mad. Who's, uh, Swainer? The dwarf, the one standing out there spreading lies among the villagers. Bastages has, Bastage has been here for decades, and he hasn't gotten any kinder with time. The miller hesitates and lowers the club a fraction. Who are you? A swainer roping foreigners to his little crusade now? With all that ruckus outside, Trumbull shakes his head. Where to begin? Swainers uh, whip them into a froth and going on about grain stores. Claims I've hidden most of it away. All I do with grain is sell it. I can't create it out of thin air, and I can't hand it out for free. I pay the farmers for the crops they bring in, and I sell what comes out of the mill. Most of it goes to the Black Hound on the west side of town for ale, and Swainer doesn't, er, and his lot sure don't seem to mind that part. You should take a look at the fields on the way into town. The crops blighted, and most of what I'm getting from the farmers. Trumbull gestures to the sacks and containers. It's gone off, rotted through. I can't pay top prices for blighted wheat, and I barely got enough good grain to go around. Swainer's howling after things he has no right to. If you don't want those people here in here with torches, maybe you ought to stop lying to me. Uh, okay. Trumbull blinks, taken aback. I'm not... Look, it's no lie. The stores really are low, and with so little grain going around, I had to raise the prices for some people. 
There are folks in this town that deserve far better than Swainer and his lot. People who have done more for Gilded Vale. Uh, maybe I ought to have a talk with him. Our farmers, they gathered grain for you. What do you mean? Uh, people like the Magistrate? I, I can't do anything about that, Trumbull says, his voice quiet. That's just how it works. Maybe things are different elsewhere. Here, Raedric's men, and or they keep the village safe, so they eat well. Uh, the Magistrate's not waiting outside to burn your home down. Maybe you should uh, give the farmers fairer prices. Trumbull opens his mouth to protest, but his expression shifts into resignation well before he finally nods and speaks. You're right, he says quietly. I've been trying to plan for the future, but we're in danger here and now. Fine, tell Swainer and the others that I've reconsidered, provided he pays the same as everyone else. He's welcome to his fair share, Trumbull sighs, and let's hope we can get trade for supplies real soon, or we'll all be in a bad way. Rad. We have the report to Swainer. I don't know where he's at, though. So that's probably somewhat problematic. I wonder if that's another stealing thing. We'll do a quick save. I'm not going to go take it, though. I feel like that might be overreaching just a tad. Alright, so that wasn't so bad. I don't know where Swainer and his crew are, though. There's a cow. Villager, villager, villager. There's fields here. I thought they were farmers, weren't they? Well, I'm not seeing them. They don't seem to exist. Well, let's go over here, because it looks like we still need to be able to exit to the east at some point. I'm not going to leave yet, but I'd like to at least get this... There we go. The eastern wood, it looks like. There's no A in eastern, apparently. Or there is an A in eastern, and they just... Yeah. Yeah. That whole thing. Alright, well, I can't seem to find the individual I'm looking for here. Um, I don't think I killed Swainer. He... This is the place where I kill those two people that I totally thought were spirits. That weren't. Yep. Should probably not return to the scene of the crime. That seems like a pretty bad choice overall. Like, uh, I just thought this was a free place to stay. I, I'm sorry, my lord. Yes, my lord, I will never do it again. Alright, did we talk to these two, I think? And there's nothing really going on over here. Hmm. Nothing going on over there. Some villagers over here. It looks like we have other ways out. Hey, what's this guy doing? So randomly wants to leave, apparently. Okay. I not really seen anything. Let's go into this house and see if anybody's in here. I have no idea what's going on or where these people are supposed to be. Maybe this is where I murdered everybody. What's this? Rats scurry behind the sack. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Come on. I'm not sure where Swainer is, to be honest, guys. Like, I have no idea. Maybe he went over to the inn? And that's a possibility, right? This is just a way out, right? Yep. Well, we've kind of covered all of town, so I guess the only place left to go is maybe the inn. Alright, let's head in and see... Let's head into the inn and see what's up. Okay, villager, villager... Haska, villager, villager. Ah, there they are. Okay. Hello. They do exist. Hello. Uh, can I see what you have for sale? Ah, I'm sure you'll find something to your liking. We have the finest cook in the deer wood. All right, club, bow, dagger, blah, 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 hide, leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we should have a decent supply of just random crap that we can sell too. I'm just going to try to sell all this stuff and just be done with it. I don't think I need any of it. What is this? Quarterstaff? I don't think we need that. Definitely don't need that. There we go. Get rid of all of those things. The hats are stupid. Let's get rid of those. Okay. That's good. We'll trade all that. And I guess we'll come down. We'll talk to Swainer. Get this all situated. And then we'll break off the episode. 
pretty close. All right, we're going to go into normal mode now. Come down hey, here. Traveler. Don't know who you are and don't much care. Keep walking. We're not here to chat with foreigners. Aloth narrows his eyes. Careful, it looks like they're cut from the same cloth as those rowdies who attacked me. He wrinkles his nose. Smells like it, too. What if I told you that Trumbull's changed his mind about the grain prices? The dwarf looks up, blinking. What? You serious? He exchanged looks with his fellows who grin hesitantly. The old man's listened to reason? About time. I told him... I told them he'd come around, but damn if he didn't take his time about it. He sets a few coppers on the table. Here, buy yourself a drink now that we can afford it. Goes for you two as well. Drinks on me. Yay, we're heroes. Sweet. Okay, can't think us enough. Can't think us enough. Alright, so I guess we'll head out and go east. Nothing really else to do. Feel pretty good about all this, folks. I feel pretty good. I mean, things are definitely moving in the right direction, and they're working for us quite well. So let's get ourselves traveling east, and then we'll break off the episode once we transition to the other area. And hopefully everything else is going to be going super sweet, sweet, nice for us. Uh, I guess we can just exit out this You must side of gather the town. your party before venturing forth. Thank you. The Estern Wood. Effects that modify the same statistic will often suppress each other. In those cases, the game only uses the highest of the bonuses. Alright folks, well, before we get too into this and figure out what's going on and where we're going to head, why don't I break off the episode right here? East to Radrick's Hold, west to the Gilded Vale. I think I'm going to break off the episode right here, and in the next episode we will explore this area and see what's up. Hopefully you folks enjoyed. I should have actually rested at the end to recover all of our health. I might do that actually between episodes and then return here. Either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I want to thank you for stopping by and joining me here in this particular episode of Pillars of Eternity. It was nice to have you here at the Freak Show, and I will see you guys next time with more Pillars of Eternity. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums, and I will see you later.